Hey everybody, John Grimsmo here, and today we're going to be using our Williman to make a screw. Let me show you. So this right here is a brass test screw. We're going to do it in brass at first so that we can uh, film it. There's not oil and coolant everywhere. Relatively straightforward screw, but it's got a very thin head, very fat diameter head, and it's got a Torx Plus pattern milled into the bottom that's only 60 thou deep. So what do we use this for? These are the grinding wheels that we grind all of our rask blades with. One inch diameter, 60 thou thick, um, and this is how we attach it. So this is a Speedio holder. Normally we make them on the Kern, but I've been practicing on the Speedio. This is 17.4 pH stainless steel that I've drilled and tapped and bored a feature um, for M6. And then the screw will attach the grinding wheel kind of to the tip of that, like so. So, the problem is we've been making these screws from 17.4 pH, which is relatively hard. It's like 45 Rockwell. Um, but as we torque them down with our Sandvik torque meter, um, they strip out and they, they wear. So I want to make it from A2. I want to heat treat it to 60 RC and I want to make it more better and, and have a lot of them so that as they do wear, we have like 20. Um, so let's use the Willamette for that. Now the Williman is a super cool, super interesting machine. Um, for this job, we're not gonna do any B90 stuff where the milling head actually goes down and then it can mill on the side like that. We don't need that for this job, but I'll show you guys how it works and how, I don't know, makes really cool parts. It's a lathe, but it's got a 30,000 RPM milling spindle and it's got a counter vise. So those jaws open and close and the whole vise comes up 90 degrees can grab onto your part, can lay it back down, and then you can mill it. So as we're making the screw, we're gonna mill it like this, we're gonna lay it, turn it like this. It, the jaws are gonna come up, catch it, they're gonna put it down, and then when it's down, we can do the Torx milling on the back. So I'm just gonna narrate this whole process and show you what's going on. There we go, first tool change, grooving tool. Got my coolant shut off because we're just cutting brass. Face the front of it. Let's get in close here. I'm rough grooving here so that I can, so the finishing tool doesn't have to work so hard. Now we're kind of cheating in brass right now. Everybody's a hero in brass. Um, when I cut A2, it's a little bit more or less forgiving. So uh, some of the tool paths are gentle for a reason. Tool change. Here's our main 35 degree V style insert turning tool. Face the end of it, come in, turn the OD and finish pass, just one finish pass. We've already roughed it out with the grooving tool. Comes up, you can hear this, the turning spindle slow down as it gets a bigger diameter because I have constant surface speed uh, engaged. Now we have a threading tool. This, this uh, threw me for a loop today. If you notice, it's threading from left to right, which lathe-wise is normally not how it works. But with the particular insert that I have here, that's what's required to get a right-hand thread. We're gonna come back in with the finish tool and we're gonna finish turn the outside of the thread. I found that turn, thread, and then a quick turn thread again leads to a better thread. Less burrs. It's worth the extra time. Just two finished threading passes again. Tool change has to orient the spindle every time it does a tool change. Now we're gonna rough groove behind the head. And then a finished clearing pass. So now the screw is kind of hanging in air. This is where it gets interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna pick you guys up, show you what's going on here. So I have my main turning tool. I'm rough turning that face, but I can't reach the radius on the front. I can't reach the other side of it. So watch what it does. It orients it and it's orienting it 180 degrees the other direction. Now I'm using the tool backwards to finish turn that face and then come in and go up and hit that radius. So it's like a double duty tool. I can use it as two different tool offsets completely. 
having one of them flipped 180 degrees. And that is so cool. All right, here's a 1 8 inch high feed mill. Do a little preparatory move. The vise is gonna come up. How cool is this? It's feeding in super slowly. You can set all these feed planes and everything. Grip. Uh, main spin will call it release. Pull bar. Clamp main spin will call it. Now the high feed tool is gonna come in and just murder this material. So cool. Doing a tool breakage check, make sure it's still there before we continue. Speeding out, rotates down, orients the U axis, that's the vise. Now I've got a 330 second four fluid end mill that I'm coming in, I'm roughing out the, uh, the Torx pocket. Just doing a ramp down. Finish that. This is a 20 thou four flute end mill. And this toolpath takes a while. This, this toolpath takes a couple minutes, but you can see it's picking away at the corners. And then it'll go to the next corner, start picking away that corner. So it picks away all the corners to rough it out and then it goes back in the center, about one thou deeper, finishes the floor from the center and then out to the corners. And that's gonna take a little while. I love this machine. Five digits an inch reads to one ten millionth of an inch. As you watch, you can actually see the heads moving side to side and front to back. And you can watch the back panel there. You can see the, the sheet metal in the back just moving ever so slightly. Just the whole back plane goes like that with the head. So once we're cutting this part from A2, we'll have coolant going. Obviously the door will be closed and uh, locked. And it's just impossible to see anything when, when coolant, when oil is going. So uh, won't be filming that at least not up close. Here we go. We're done. A chamfer. Super fast chamfer. It's like a joke. Here we go. Done, done. So at this point, the vise has opened up. You can see that there's, uh, well, a lot of dust around. Having the coolant on usually helps with that. So let's get my air gun. Gently blow this off. So this part's kind of interesting. Um, doing it in this orientation with the head, head up like this. So the jaws have opened up. Normally you program your part so that it can fall down, down this chute into a little uh, parts basket right there. But because the clamping diameter is so much smaller than the head, it even if the vise opens up, it, it can't fit down there. So this part might be better suited off to be made in this orientation, right there. And then you can actually, like I said, you can tilt down the B so that you can mill that Torx pattern in this situation. Um, and then you should be able to turn the back of that head and all the features with that turning tool being zero or 180. And then the, it still doesn't work though. It still doesn't work because your jaws can't open up big enough to reach over that feature. Now you could clamp onto that feature, but it's very thin. So I don't, I don't love that feature either. So, in conclusion, since I only have to make a handful of these, I'm just gonna make them one by one. But if this were to be a part that I were making, you know, hundreds of thousands of, tens of thousands of, um, I'd have to get a bit more creative with how I hold the part, how I orient the part, so that it can spit the part and then make the next one automatically. Because as it is, we've already pulled the bar. Um, now that I've pulled out my part, I can hit go again and it'll make the next part. But I don't have a way to eject the part automatically right now. Um, like I said, for this part, I don't care. For other parts that we're making, I do, it just ejects automatically and they go down and it's amazing. 
I've dialed in all my tolerances for brass, and then once you go to a steel, everything goes out. Steel is harder to cut than brass is, so if you dial in you know, perfectly quarter inch diameter, it's gonna be bigger in steel because it just takes more cutting pressure, more tool pressure in steel, so um, that's okay. Not a big deal there. Now is the time for me to cut some A2. The, the program is proven, I've made a handful of them. They're awesome, they look amazing in brass, but it's gonna be way too soft. Um, okay, let me go to A2. And then uh, I'll film a little bit of it and then uh, we'll be done. Actually, before I do that, let me show you something. So notice here we have the two aluminum vice jaws that are just screwed on. And I just bored a simple little uh, hole in there, quarter inch hole, and I use these 50 thou or 75 thou shims. So I put that in the vise, I clamp the vise, and then I machine my feature. That way there's uh, over travel. Like without this in place, it could squish all the way to flat to be less than a quarter inch hole. So there's, there's plenty of grip on the part. Now what's really cool is my buddy CJ uh, has two Williman machines, two new ones, and he's been making these soft jaws because for his work he needs dozens of these, hundreds of these. Um, so he sent me a nice little care package with uh, seven, eight sets of these. And it's honestly so, so nice to not have to make these and to just have them. They bolt right in. They're all the same. They're all repeatable. And then I just machine my feature on the two things and then it's good to go. Um, you can see here I made these steel ones and they're complicated, take a long time to make out of steel. But I have some really trick features in these to make our Saga pocket clips. And uh, yeah, lets you do cool stuff for sure. Here's another example of a step design that I made. So two of these will kind of go together like so. Moving to A2. I have an A2 bar in there, close the door. Coolant is set from off, now it's on auto. My mist collector is turned on, I'm in auto mode. Um, the only thing I've changed in the program is the grooving, the rough grooving. I do a pecking as opposed to just a plowing into, um, into brass like we were doing before. Okay, everything's good, starts. Here we go. Oh, I saw smoke come out. Yeah, you don't mess around with steel. So you can see the packing, you can hear it even. And I'm also packing to make the chip smaller. It helps with chip management and it just makes everything nicer. Just takes a bit longer. All right, we'll let that run and then I'll show you afterwards. So while that's running, um, I just thought of something really interesting. So what's wild about this machine is you could literally make the screw in this orientation because you could come in and you could mill and thread mill and bore all those features. You could flip it over. You could mill the torques from the top side, just like that. And then you could come in with the vice jaws and, and clamp it like that and then just finish the head. Like you could actually do that and it would work extremely well. That's nuts. It's looking good. Come on up for a tool change. There's the high feed tool. Vice up, vice feed in. Call it their vice closed. Call it open, bar pull out. High feed. Love that sound. I actually see a little, maybe a little tab on the bottom of the part. Maybe it's just a little burr. Let's check it out. A little bit less dusty than it was with brass and no coolant, eh? The 
The one thing I do not like about oil is how messy it is. It's just always slimy. Everything is always gross. But it sure cuts nice. So, visually inspecting. Surface finish is not quite as shiny as, uh, as the brass, but everything looks really good. Um, do my quick test fit with just an M6 nut. And it actually threads on. I expected the threads to be too big. Mic my diameter. Actually small. 2489, I'm shooting for 250, 25000, or 24999. So I gotta come up a little bit in, my, in diameter, but no big deal there. And then we'll test our torques. Like a glove that fits amazing. It's Torx Plus. We've gone to um, tools in the shop. Everything is Torx Plus now. They are just, they last so much longer and they're so much better. That fits great. So I'll make the diameter a little bit bigger. I'll confirm the thread uh, pitch a little bit better. I'll three wire mic it or whatever. Just make it exactly what I need. But then, Test it in my little test arbor here. Man, it goes in, fits great. Looks great, I love it, love it, love it. So I'm gonna make a bunch of them and then I'll send them over to the sky so that he can heat treat them whenever he's got time. Good to go, love this machine. It's fun to make more parts on it, more and more things. Uh, the goal is to start making pocket clips which as you can see my error error of my ways there in that one but i've made a few good pocket clips uh, once this project is complete it is all about the pocket clips on this machine so uh that'll be fun that'll be super fun all right guys later bye